three, two, one. I have one question for you. Do you want to build yourself a badass electric mountain bike that goes 55 miles per hour, has a 40 mile long range, and is sure to give you some kind of owie? Now, yes, I'm sure you've been asked that question many times in your life, but I digress. In my last video, I modified a cheap mountain bike and made it stupid fast, and it was received well, but for the sake of entertainment value, I was very vague about the actual steps of the build process. So that's why today I will be going into step-by-step -step detail on how to build this badass 6,000 watt e-bike. And the best part is it should cost you less than $2,000 to build. So gentlemen and ladies, strap yourselves into your seat. Or maybe put on some comfy shoes if you have a stand-up desk. Because this is the official build process of this 6,000 watt DIY electric mountain bike. Before we get into it, if you haven't already, make sure to go ahead, hit that like button, leave a nice comment down below, and most importantly, subscribe for that YouTube algorithm, guys. It helps me out a lot. I'm trying to reach my goal of 1 million subscribers. Just hit that subscribe button, and let's get right into it. Alright guys, so you already know the drill, we already had this bike fully built, but we gotta take it apart for the video so I can show you guys in step-by-step -step detail how to put this thing together. And a little spoiler, it's actually a lot easier than you think it is. For this build, you're going to want to use a mountain bike, something with a triangular shaped frame, 135mm dropout distance, and preferably you want to use disc brakes. So after disassembling the build, I actually laid out all of the parts on the floor, and then I labeled them so that you guys can see exactly what parts are going to go into this bike. Which by the way, I linked them down in the description below, so if you want to build your own, make sure to go ahead and check those out. Now that we've got that information out of the way, the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the wheels because the disc rotors on these are definitely not going to be big enough to stop the spike properly. So you're going to want to replace them with at least 180 to 203 millimeter brake rotors in order to have adequate stopping power. So we do the same thing for our rear motor, but first we add a 3mm spacer to the rear. Just keep that disc rotor just a little bit off that motor, and this helps with keeping it away from your motor cable so you don't get that cut up while you're riding. After that, we put on our 2 or 3mm brake rotor to the back, making sure that it was nice and secure. You want to make sure that you use some sort of Loctite glue on the bolts. I actually went ahead and added that after I filmed that little segment, just to be safe so that it doesn't come out while you're riding. After prepping our wheels to be added to our bike, we then take off the old mechanical brakes. These are no good for stopping this bike, we're actually going to replace them with some much higher quality Shimano hydraulic brakes. Now it's time to put on our new wheels. As you can see from my rear wheel, I put on a little spacer. This just makes it so that it fits more snugly into our rear axle. Getting this motor in was super easy given the fact that it will slide into any standard bicycle dropout. And now that we've got that on, here's a little close up of the axle. And of course next, we can go ahead and put our front wheel back on. After getting our wheels on, I thought it would be a good time to get on that front brake. For our front brake, we have a Shimano SLX 120 brake. Super good stopping power. I use it on my Enduro e-bike, which is much heavier than this, by the way. And the mount I'm using here is basically a Frankenstein but between a front 203mm brake mount and just some other brake mount that I had lying around. Now, I would have liked to immediately go straight to mounting the rear brake, but first we had to actually make sure that that rear wheel was locked in and not going anywhere so it doesn't fall off while we ride. So the motor that I bought actually comes with some mounting hardware, and this is the order that I actually put everything in, and this has worked very well for me so far. And of course we make sure that's nice and tight so we don't have any movement back there. What's all that movement back there? And then next up, we finally were able to put on our rear brake. As you can see, the mounts here are a little bit silly. I didn't quite have a proper 203mm brake mount for this bike. The one I was trying to use just wasn't really working for it, so I actually made this little makeshift mount that's working out for me pretty well. And also, for whatever reason, no matter how hard I tried, the Shimano SLX brake would not fit onto the rear, so I ended up just using the stock mechanical brake, but at least it should be better than nothing. Next up, I went ahead and strapped in my motor cable. I just used zip ties to do this, which are very nice and convenient to use because they're both strong and also easy to take off if you need to undo whatever damage you just committed. And I just went along the bottom of the frame and then I brought it upwards because as you'll see later in this video, that's where I'm gonna put the controller. After that, it was time to install our battery into our frame. For this build, I'm using a 72 volt 20 amp hour battery with a 80 amp BMS. It comes with this little bag which has these crappy little straps on the inside, but I went ahead and took advantage of them just because it makes it so that your battery doesn't move around as much, made sure they were out of the way before sliding my battery in.
And then after doing that, I made sure everything was nice and tight, I closed up the bag, and we were ready to put it on the inside of our frame. And then finally it was time to strap in our battery. Sliding it in was easy, but actually the process of strapping it in can be a little bit tedious, but it took me about 10 minutes, and this is sort of a very self-explanatory step. Next up I take my 80 amp controller and slide it into the bag that it came with. There's a little hole that goes out of the bag and the thing is the only wires that I actually stick out the hole are the ones that I'm going to be using. So of course the wires which are going to our motor and battery which are the ones that I just slipped out, our hall sensor wire and then the wires which connect the controller to the LCD screen and throttle. Next up I simply strap the controller to the top of the bike using the straps that came with this controller bag. I'm currently trying to figure out a better way to do this because these straps are actually not very good, but until then this will have to do. Next up I take our brake handles, our throttle, and our LCD screen. I slide them onto these handlebars and make sure they're nice and tight using the screws that came with them. So right now we're taking the red and black wires from our controller and we're going to hook it up to our battery connector right here like this. And we're going to use this little wire board here to do that. So. Now it's time to hook up the wires from the motor to this controller. It's the blue, yellow, and green ones. There are no specific order here, just whatever works for you. So first we're gonna go ahead and do the blue. So if you didn't quite understand what I was saying there, we're basically just hooking up the motor to the controller as well as our battery. And this is done almost completely through these large wires that you see here. Of course, I make sure that they're nice and tight so that we don't have any issues. And by the way, yes, I did put a cover over these wires so they're not so exposed, I just forgot to film it. After connecting the motor wires to the controller, we then hook up the hall sensor connector. You don't actually need to run a hall sensor test for this specific kit because I'm pretty sure they do it already in the factory. And then after that, what I'm doing here is I'm taking the wires that are going from the LCD screen as well as the throttle and I'm wrapping them around my frame just to shorten them and then I'm connecting them to the appropriate connectors. Now this is very plug and play and there's actually an instruction manual which tells you exactly which connectors go where. And then next, as you can see here, I'm plugging in the battery charge connector into the battery, and then I'm tucking it into the battery bag. After doing that, we're finally ready to hook up the battery to the system. And after hooking up, I tuck the connector down into the battery bag and zip it up so it looks nice and clean. After that, the last thing we needed to add to our bike was our chain. I did this by using a chain linking tool. So you might have noticed that I removed the gear shifter on this bike and just put the chain on the highest gear possible. That's because on a bike like this, there's really no need to have low gears just because you're gonna be using the throttle 99.9% .9 of the time and the chain's really only there to keep your crank stiff when you're going in those lower speeds. And lastly, I tucked away all the loose wires that were hanging out of the frame. This was a little bit difficult just because there's not too many places to put them, but the end result looked a little bit like this. And finally, we have our finished product and we're ready to rip it around on the roads like it was meant to be. Three, two, one. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Alright guys, so thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's going to help some of you who are looking to do your own e-bike project similar to this. But like always, if you haven't already, make sure to go ahead, hit that like button, leave a nice comment down below. Most importantly, subscribe so you can help me reach my subscriber goals. And I'll see you guys very soon in the next one. Later.